Let's show some love for everybody that y'all saw tonight. Yeah. Anytime that I perform, I try to come with a with a type of message. I'm a comedian, but I do a lot of silliness. But um, we've got, uh, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve. We've got this 12-year-old, what's your name again? Caitlin. We've got 12-year-old Caitlin, and we've got 16-year-old Brandon there. I mean, um, I don't know about y'all, but while the schools are complaining about all mm -hmm. these budgets and all that, they need to reinvest back in the arts because this is the way kids should be spending their creative minds instead of the Xboxes and the Wii's and all that other garbage that's out there. MTV Snooky, who? Anyways, <laughs> that, that's just my beef. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something. When I wrote this piece, I did poetry also. I didn't know if it was going to be a, a poem or a comedy, and I just said to heck with it. I'm just going to let it be. It's called The Cell Phone Chronicles. Now, real quick, everybody, go ahead and pull your cell phone out if you have it. If you have it, let me see it. <laughs> a little background about me, I'm, I'm a divorced man and uh, I'm also one of those cocky type of single guys and some, I see a lot of y'all with, with your wives so maybe y'all can't relate but I know you can, I just know you don't want to sleep on the couch. But, you know, I understand, I understand. But how this started is like, you know, I would get numbers, I would collect numbers and then I would call a girl and then it's like, as I ended the phone call, I would say, I'll talk to you later. Now, fellas, help me out on that. What does later mean to us? It could be tomorrow. It could be next week. It may never be. We may never be. And you poor girls, y'all sitting there like, what the heck? Am I right, ladies? Well, I found this one girl that we connected and the conversation was flowing. And anybody ever had that phone conversation that started like at 8 o'clock at night and ended about 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> and you're so excited. I know you haven't been there yet already. <laughs> don't scare me. Please don't scare me. But it's like, and, and then you're like the next morning, even though you had to be up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you're floating. You know what I'm talking about when you met your, your wife here? You just floated. The world was perfect as long as you could hear her voice. Well, this is how this chronicle starts. I met this young lady. We would talk to all hours of the night. And it's like, we didn't talk about nothing. Sometimes the TV would be on her place, TV at my place, and it'd be like something like this. What you doing? Nothing. What you doing? None. <laughs> well, maybe I'll call you back. Why? Okay, so you still hold there. But yet, you're floating on top of the world. And this would go on day after day after day. Till this one day, when I called her, I couldn't reach her. And I got up the next morning, and they got this stupid text message, which I hate. But I thought I would use the text message, and I sent something that in my mind seemed gay. I said, just want to let you know I'm thinking of you. No reply. Then I sent her another message. Maybe the phone was acting up. I was like, hey, have a good day today. I go in the bathroom. I shower. I shave. I go to work with a song in my heart. You know that feeling? Song in my heart. I make that mistake of calling her from work. Still on the voicemail. And you know, if it was a ring, half a ring, the phone is off. But because it rang repeatedly, I know the phone is on. So now I'm beginning to feel like she's ignoring me. And I'm trying to figure out, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Lunchtime comes. I call her. Now, Beyonce is in my head because I leave her this stupid message. I was like, oh, so it's like that? Well, you must not know about me. Y'all know that song? So then when I get off work, I send her another call. I, before I get, go outside, I send her another call, still nothing. So I'm sitting there, and that's when that stalker is about to take over. I'm going to drive over to her house and find out what her problem is. I start the car up, my mindset. Now, what I didn't tell you is that last phone call, I've cussed her out, but because I got young ears, I can't tell you what I told you. I told you. But I've cussed her out. Now I am in my car, I am driving. Phone rings. I look at my phone, but it's not my phone. Phone rings again. I look over in the seat, I move a jacket, and there's her phone. Oh. <laughs> in a hot sweat and a panic, I pick it up, and I see it's got a lock on it. I'm trying to unlock it to figure out if I can call and figure out a voicemail. 
<laughs> so what's a player to do? But call the number back and it goes something like this. Baby. You know that message I sent you earlier? Girl, you know I was just playing, right? Unfortunately, to my demise, we never talked again. Hmm. And the moral to my story, the more this is supposed to bring us together, the more it separates us. So, there's a cell phone problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Are there any others? Anybody have anything they want to say, Eileen? I, I think you should lead us in another song. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you jumping back like, on like me? Mike? I'm going to do one other thing real okay. quick. I'm not going to perform, I just want to do a shout out. Okay. How many of y'all been to the Breath of Africa? Oh, I, is this an annual event? That's it's held? A, well, it won't happen this year. It will happen next year. It won't happen this year. Okay. This year, what we're doing is ramping up this, the okay. Acoustic Spoken Word Cafe. So even though it may not be doing it this year, and since we've got this, what I want to talk about is that by a show of hands, y'all from Fort Wayne, how many of y'all have said or heard that there's nothing to do in Fort Wayne? Let me see your hand. Oh, yeah. There's so much to do. There's so much talent in this city. And you know, the, the great thing about, I participated with the Breath of Africa last year. And uh, it was a wonderful event. There was a whole bunch of different things that was going on with that festival. And I would like to see it continue. I would like to see this continue. And I know a lot of y'all may have Facebook, email, mm -hmm. cell phones. Let folks know. Let's, let's fill this up. Let's strengthen our community. And I want to say that it's a shame. Can I say one cuss word? No. No, mm -hmm. no it's, it's not a bad nope. cuss word. But this fits the community. Yes. It's a damn shame that Lincoln Life moved their headquarters from mm. Fort Wayne because they said there was nothing to do in this town. Mm. It's a shame that Navistar has just left to go to Illinois. It's a shame that we have all these institutions of higher learning to get these kids to come to Fort Wayne, get educated, to get those degrees, and leave because they don't think there's anything for us. Mm -hmm. When you point a finger, always remember this, there's three pointing back at you. Each one of us needs to take that responsibility, tell someone about what's going on here, the positive, 